So let's see how we go about simplifying this further. For a variable which is categorical in nature, such as embarked, there are 644 passengers who embarked from Southampton. There are 168 passengers who embarked from the Cherbourg. And there are 77 passengers who embarked from Queenstown. Now, it is very simple to treat the missing values for a categorical variable. You just take that particular column and wherever you have missing values in the column, you can replace it with the most common value and that is the mode. When we talk about treating the missing values in numeric feature, we may try algorithmic approaches. Those work the best. So how do we go about treating it for this particular column called embarked? Because all the other columns where we have missing values are all numerical in nature. So let's see how we go about doing this. First of all, we already see the most common value in this case is Southampton. So let's just replace the missing values with Southampton. Write the name of the column. So wherever we have missing values, which are denoted by np.nan, numpy missing values, we are going to replace that with an S, which stands for Southampton. Let me just run this. And if I show you the df dot info again that now embarked has 891 values which means it is complete in fact i could have shown you df dot is null dot sum that's one and the same thing you will see that embarked has no missing value now so it is a complete column so now we are left with the numeric features which have missing values so now we are going to call a library which has very useful functions from fancy impute import knn and iterative imputer. These are the algorithms that will be used for imputation purposes. In open source world, often it is very frustrating that you get stuck with certain packages not being up to date in your installed version. That's why we always have an advantage with Google Colab. It will be most up to date. In subsequent videos, I'll probably show you how you can actually keep your entire data on your Google Drive and work with Google Colab or you can read the data which is available on your local machine in Google Colab and work on it. Very convenient. The limitation with these techniques, however, is that they only understand numerical data. So we have to find a way to convert our categorical features, that is embark and gender, to numeric. For this purpose, we're going to use get dummies. This converts the categorical features to numeric features. We'll probably do a separate video to tell you what all options are available when it comes to this conversion. But for now, just realize that computers only understand numbers. So if you enter any kind of categorical data, at some stage, you have to convert it to numbers for your computer to be able to understand and work with those. The inputs that this requires is the name of the data frame. And when we convert it to categories, we can actually drop one of the levels. So I'm going to write drop first is equal to true. Let's see how our data looks like right now. So if I look at the head of the data frame, so gender, the column that we had, has been replaced with gender male, and that's sufficient, so it's one and zero. And this typically assigns levels in alphabetical order. So female will be assigned a zero, and M being later in the alphabets will be given a one. Same way we have the embark towns, and you can imagine that we don't need all three levels of the categorical variable here because if you have zero for Queenstown and Southampton, then it means it would have been a one for Cherbourg. Same way, if it is already a one for Southampton, then it would have been a zero for the Queenstown and Cherbourg. In this case, when we, where we had three levels in our data, only two will be sufficient as separate columns. In general, if you have n levels in a feature in a categorical column, you only need n minus one levels as separate columns. Now that we've already called the library, let's instantiate the algorithm. Since we're going to try two separate methods for the treatment of missing values, let's take two separate copies of the data frame. So we are saying dfknn is equal to df.copy. Why are we copying the data? See, it's a good practice. If anywhere in the process you go wrong, you have an option to go back to the original data. I'm taking another copy, which I'm calling DF mice, And this mice stands for uh, an advanced imputation technique called multivariate imputations through chained equations. So let's just take a copy for the time being. Let's instantiate the algorithms that we have called. So I'm first calling KNN. 
we try to find the record similar to the record where the value is missing and then try to come up with an imputation. That is always a visor imputation as we discussed. So KNN is the K nearest K is a general number. It will try to find certain number of neighbors. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to replace the missing values spread across the entire data, considering all rows and columns using the KNN imputation. And for this, you try something called as a fit transform method, where you just pass the data that we originally copied. So if I execute this, it has done some kind of imputation. Interesting would be to see if we still have missing values in our data. Let me show you if we had missing values in the original data. I hope you remember that we had a number of missing values in the original data. Let's see what's the status now when we have applied imputation. So I'm going to do it on the imputed data frame, which is DFKNN. You see, all of this is complete. And this has been done using a much more logical approach. So now we're going to try the next technique, which is mice imputation. Once again, that's multivariate imputations through chained equations. It's a much more complex technique in terms of algorithms, tries various combinations. But again, the bottom line is it is not a column centric approach. So let me instantiate mice here for you, which will be using iterative imputer. And here we would want to mention a random state just to ensure that the random initiation that happens is constant when we repeat it. So you can choose any value of your choice here. That doesn't matter. As long as you fix a value here, the results will be repeatable. That's it. That's, that's the whole motivation of a random state. Let's instantiate mice. Now, if we do the same step, so what we want to do is we want to replace all the missing values in the backup data frame or the copied data frame, which is a DF mice data frame using mice algorithm. And we want to apply a fit transform method. So what is this doing? This is the transformation. It's going to apply the algorithm and make those changes for the missing values, which let's just execute this. So it prints a lot of stuff as the output here. You don't have to worry about it. What we may be interested in checking, however, is has it been able to do imputation or not? So let's just do DF mice info. And there you go. You see your data is complete. All right. So here we are with the missing values treated. But let's just see what happened to the outliers. We may want to do a comparison with the original data frame. So I will have to just read another instance of that here to load data set because we have been making some changes. So let's take the fair column of the original data frame and try to do a comparison with the transform data frames. These are DFKNN and DFMice. In order to do this, the best way would be to create side by side box plots. And here is the code to do that. So we are deciding the plotting area and then we are creating three plots next to each other. The first plot will be the plot representing the original data frame. The second plot will be the plot representing the KNN transform data. And the third plot will be the plot representing the mice transform data. Let's see what happens when we execute this. So we get these three plots and as you can see, this is your original data. You can look at the scale and where it is now. We didn't say that we want to eliminate the outliers. We said that we want to treat the outliers. I'm sure you'd agree that compared to this, where your fare was ranging anywhere from zero to uh, 500 plus, this is a better scenario to be in, whether it's KNN or my. So now we've treated the outliers and we've treated the missing value. You might be wondering why we still have a few outliers. When you change the values, the outlier thresholds are recalculated with the transform data, but that's not really as big a problem as it was originally. So we'll be happy with this data right now. We learned about two different techniques for treating the outliers and missing values. In fact, we took a shortcut. We treated the outliers and missing values together using the algorithmic approaches. These approaches certainly are superior compared to the common mean and median based approaches. Now we understand that you could be at different stages in your data science or analytics journey. But one thing that's for sure is that this is not a theoretical subject. While the understanding of theory is important, there would be a time when you'll be expected to start doing things on your own and you learn the best when you do it yourself. It's like driving, right? You, you can't learn driving by seeing someone else drive somewhere. You have to hold the steering yourself. Same way in data science, while you can continue to hear people 
and it will make sense. At some stage, you have to get started with the real work. 